I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Dearly beloved, he who searches our heart and knoweth our thoughts tells us in his holy words, if we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And to encourage such confession, to secure our fullest confidence in his readiness to receive and bless us, our adorable Lord said it, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Wherefore, I pray to seek you, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice into the throne of the heavenly grace, saying, Confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from thy ways like all sheep. We have followed too much device and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things we ought to have done, and we have done those things we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Restore thou to a penitent, according to thy promises, declare unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant most merciful Father for his sake, that we may have a live a godly, righteous and soul life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercies have promised forgiveness of sins to all those who, with heart and repentance and true faith, turn unto thee, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And all our show forth thy grace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the name of the Son, and shall be worthy of our name. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord give you grace. Let us recite the Jubilee O'Neill, Psalms 100. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence of the song. Be, be sure, sure that the Lord he is God. It is he that the fear should not be ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. O oh, boy, you're ready to escape the thanksgiving and then choose forth with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Our responsive reading, let us turn to page 19, fifth Sunday, second coming of Christ. Ye man of Galilee, why stay gazing ye into the heavens? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds and having the power and great glory. With the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. All the holy angels with him. And flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another, like the shepherd the lion and sheep from the goats. He shall come to be glorified in his saints. He will fall up death and victory. Then also, them also which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. The kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and of our Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. He is waiting for him, and he will save us. As the lightning coming out of the east, and shining even into the west, the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore so one and righteous with prayer. Glory be to the Father, and to 
the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was again, now it shall be, where will God end. Amen. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, made of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of Virgin Mary, suffered on the righteous Father, was crucified and gave Mary, and he descended into hell, and third day rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and stood on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from there he should come to judge and to bring in the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of life, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O oh Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O oh God, make clean our heart within us. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, without whose help we can do nothing that is good, be with us and bless us in our present work. Look graciously upon us as members of this school and enable us by thy spirit to receive the truth in a loving and obedient heart and to acquire such knowledge of thy word and of thy Son, Jesus Christ, as shall make us wise unto salvation. Help us to watch against temptation and to resist and overcome and present it. To be faithful, brave, and true to our duties and to thee, our God. To hate that which thou hated and to love that which thou lovest. Grant that we be made thy children by adoption and grace. May daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit and increase in righteousness and true holiness more and more until we come to thine everlasting kingdom. Bless all parents, teachers, and friends, and so qualify and guide them by thy word and spirit, that their instruction may be wise, their example good, their influence godly. Direct us in all our doings with thy most gracious favor, and further us with thy continual help. That in all our works begun, continued, and ended in thee, we may glorify thy holy name, and finally, by thy mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bless our pastor, may he faithfully preach the everlasting word, and may his heart be full with the fullness of the gospel of peace. Bless all missionaries of the cross, and give power to the preaching of, of thy truth in all the earth. Or hasten the time when our Savior shall come again to our world. And the Holy Spirit shall be abundantly poured out, that the kingdom of this world may become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Bless Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patient and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Which God has given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all at home. Amen. Good morning again. We're happy to see all of you. Um, today is fifth Sunday. All the adults will be in here. And I don't know if there's anybody down here, but all the adults will be in here this morning. And we will have our lesson by the one and only. <laughs> Miss Lisa Stewart. Subject of our lesson. Binding and gathering is taken from Matthew, the 13th chapter, the 44th through the 52nd verses. Verse number 44. And the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, that which when a man had found it, he hid it, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, 
and by it that feel. Verse 45. Verse 46. Another one of my 
hidden treasures. Where are your hidden treasures? Do you have something that you hold dear? That you keep up with? Just a little. It might be priceless to some other people. But they're, I mean, you know, they may not give up, but they're priceless. You know all the money in the world you can't give, can't give me for this because these are my hidden treasures. These are my hidden treasures. And where we see where the man, that he had hidden treasures too. But as we go into today's lesson, and it says, the man had treasures without realizing it. And you always say another man's, another man, one man's junk is another man's treasure. We may have some things we want to get rid of and they cost a lot. Some of us may be holding on to antiques, but we will never ever get rid of them because they mean the world to us. But if he had sold, if the man had sold the violin case without looking in the violin, case and sold it, he would have never seen the boat. To have discerning eyes and discerning ears are very important. Now in today's lesson we are talking about two horizons. The first is the historical and then the second is about the ancient world. Discernment in the Bible to understand what is good and evil. In Matthew 13, 13, Jesus says, this is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. This is the third of the three lessons of the parables of Jesus. Today's lesson includes four of many, the little many, many, M I N I, narratives that are only. These are only found in the Gospel of Matthew. Parable 1. Hidden treasures. Verse 44. Costly pearl. Verse 45 and 46. Costly pearls are valuable pearls. They equal the kingdom of of heaven. They equal the kingdom of heaven. The moral of Matthew 13, the 13th chapter, the 44 through the 46 verses, when we discover the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, we receive the greatest possible treasure. When we discover the kingdom of God, we receive the greatest possible treasure, which is Jesus, the Lord himself. The kingdom of verse 44, the kingdom of heaven, that is the kingdom of God, it's like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered it up. Now, when we read our lesson, it shows us that the man was in a field. Now, the field could not have been, the field may not have been like a big field. We don't know, but it's a when we say a field, we know when a person say a field, we know that somebody will plant in a field. A garden, we plant in a garden, but a field is larger than a garden. A field is much larger than a garden. Got a question. See a lot of corn out here now? Why is there so much corn out here? Is it the year for corn? In, in certain areas. 
In certain areas? It changes, it changes from area to area, year after year. Area to area, year after year. Okay. So that's why you see so much corn now on 52 and growing up. It's year to year. It's a lot of corn. So next year, maybe something different. They okay. Rotate it. Oh, you rotate it. Thank you, ma'am. Just to say, Sister Mim said, Sister Sarah said, you rotate it. This year's corn, next year it might be here. So I mean, so you can't plant the same thing. I don't say you can't, but it's better to rotate it. It's not good for the soil. Okay, it's not good for the soil. Thank you. Answer that question. <laughs> Appreciate that. But when the man, this man is in a field. So I get he's digging, you know, I you know plant some flowers or something, you dig and <laughs> And he's digging with his hole, and he's digging, and he finds a bag of coins. Let's say money. He finds money. Now, the first thing, if you find money, what you gonna do with money? If you find, what you gonna do with money? Thank you, Lord. Take it, spend it. Okay, dig some more and try to find. It. Okay, first thing I do if I find money, don't judge me now, pick it up and put it in your pocket. That's the very first thing. Ooh, look at my luck. Well, if you nobody around, but you're digging in this field now. You're in a garden. Say, like garden, you're digging. Now you find this money. The first thing you're going to look around and see if anybody looking. Then you go to wonder. I wonder who put this in here. I watch a lot of Western. I wonder if somebody hid this money in, they gonna come back for it. Never know. Never know. I always say, you know, you never know. People hide, you know, because people hide money. I often said if I won the lottery, if I won the lottery, I would give me a um, I would buy me a I would buy me a rock ball of dough, put him in a fence, give him air conditioning, heat, give him his own little house, and put all my money in the house with him. Because ain't nobody to bother him, because I haven't trained being in food. Pulling my cool cash. But I'm just saying, that's what you that's what he said. But the joy this man had, the joy when he found this money. When he found this money, you know, he he covered, you know, he found it, but then he covered it up. And I'm sure when he covered it up, he put a mark or something there so he could come back to where he found. It's coins. I'll say it's coins. You know, we got money, but now, you know, like, so, you know, like, we say yes, you know, we always say dough, bread, you know, when we come, I'm going to count my coins, which is a term, a term, so now we're using money now. We count, we count his coins. Then, in his joy, he's so happy. What is joy? Do you have ever have, you ever feel happy? How many of you happy right now? Yes, yes. You happy? Yes. You happy? Is that you happy? Yeah, you happy right now? Okay. Huh? What'd you say? You're not happy right now? Why are you not happy? What'd you say? Oh, she wants to be on a trip. Oh, my. She said she's not happy. But we happy to see you. We happy to see you. <laughs> Mr. Good Brother Williams over there, he's happy. Sister um, Maury Robinson, your grandbaby, she looks happy back there. We're happy. We would be happy to be here. We're happy to see everybody. But he was happy. The kingdom of God is righteous. So he knew. He had to go out. He had to buy that field. Because guess what? It might be more. It might be more. And guess what? My land, my money. That's what he was thinking about. My land. I buy this land, give up everything to buy this land, and guess what I have? It'll be my money. The kingdom of God is righteous and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit that we can learn. One main thing is that the kingdom of God is so valuable that losing everything else is okay. Everything on earth Everything on earth is okay. But getting the kingdom of heaven 
is a happy trade of giving up everything else. When we give up friends, sometimes we have to give up friends because when we turn and we're looking toward, you know, our mind turns to do things. When we're looking to Christ or we are in Christ and we want to be closer to Christ and learn about Christ. Some of your friends might say, that's not my, that's not my thing right now. You go ahead and do your thing, I'm going to go ahead. And you know, you lose friends if that's what you want to be all holier than thou and religious. You go ahead. You may lose friends. You may lose some family members that they, they don't believe. But it's okay. Because the trade-off is the kingdom of heaven. You know, the kingdom, the, the, the trade-off is the kingdom of heaven. I read a story that it was a lady that her husband was dying of cancer. And he, she was sitting by his bed and she was wiping his face and wiping his sweat. And then a friend came by and said, was telling her daughter I read and said, how? I said, you know, they only, they only had a, a few hours to live. And they said, how? How are you so happy and you can be joyful about this? She said, well, you know, I can go to hell, you can go to hell, he can go to hell, but he has chosen Christ. And the joy that he has that knowing that when he dies, that he's dying in Christ and he's going to heaven. So that's why she had her joy. Because she knew that's where the joy, the joy lies. And her friend didn't understand that, but that's what she said. He died in Christ and he loved the Lord. So that's what she knew, but in his joys, he, the, the farmer, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field to make sure he doesn't lose, don't, he didn't lose it. The point of selling everything this parable is simply to show where your heart is. Where's your heart? Where your heart is. In your treasures. In your treasures. Where your treasures is there is where your heart will be also. Matthew 6 and 21 tells us that. And if your heart is to have the kingdom, the kingdom of God, it is to, be, to have heaven above all things, Luke 12 and 32 come true for us. It is your Father's good pleasures to give you the kingdom of heaven. Now, in Philippians 3, 7, and 8, it tells us that Apostle Paul expressed whatever, whatever gain I had, I counted as lost for the sake of of Christ. I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth knowing of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for his sake. I have suffered the loss of all things and count them all rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. When you lose everything but you gain Christ, it is a blessing. It is a blessing when you lose everything but you gain Christ. I was watching the show, um, Reba, and um, the, the show is the Tyler show is Reba, and this is the old show. But I like watching the um, show. But her son-in-law, she was say everybody was going to church, and she said, "Why? Um, why don't you want to go to church?" And he said, "Because I don't believe in God." And she said, "You don't believe in God. When did you stop believing in God?" So when he found out that he couldn't play football anymore because he was playing, you know, professional on the professional level. And he said, well, and I prayed and prayed and prayed and then I stopped believing in God. And she told the pastor and the pastor asked her, well, and what, did, what was your response? Say, have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? And she said, no. And then she said, I have been there. She said, because when I lost my when I lost my family, and if you ever watched the movie show, you know I have a teenage daughter that was pregnant, and she goes, Why me? Why? You know? Why why? 
And so she thought God had turned her back. But when you think God turns your back, then he can pass and say, why do you tell him that? Because all of us, we waver. All of us waver in some form or fashion. But we are reminded that when everything is lost, we still have God. We still have Jesus Christ. We don't have to buy the kingdom or barter for the kingdom or negotiate for the kingdom. We don't. The kingdom of, if the kingdom of God is received. It is received without any pay. Matthew 5 and 3 says, Blessed are the pure in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. There is the kingdom of heaven. In his joy, in his joy, he goes and buys that field. In his joy, he goes and buys that field because the joy that he had found the treasure, he wanted to keep it for himself. And it reminds me of a song that this, the joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me, the joy that I have. Now, parable two, the costly pearl. The kingdom of heaven to the work of a pearl merchant. Pearls. Pearls. Now y'all are trying to come and get me over the head. I'm this is a real pearl now. But this is a pearl. A pearl. A rare, a rare Jew. A rare, a rare Jew. A pearl is a rare Jew. Pearls are unique. Gems, living, living in a lonely creature. And what is that creature? Clam. 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 Huh? Clam. I call it oysters. Clam. Oysters. It's an oyster. Find a pearl in an oyster. Find a pearl in an oyster. This parable reminds us that Jesus is more valuable. In the first, Jesus conveys powerful the worth of the kingdom of heaven. See, the merchant, he was, he was going to give up everything if he could find that rare pearl. Not a ruby, not a diamond, but an actual pearl. One pearl that was of great value that would make him, as they say, filthy, filthy rich. God is more precious and wonderful than anything we can imagine on earth. Our treasures are nothing compared to his glory. Our treasures are nothing compared to his glory. Now let's see here. Now, Paul wrote, I'm referring back to Paul, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spark, spot, or wrinkle or anything such thing that she might be holy without blemish. Why did the Lord choose the symbol of the pearl why did the Lord use the symbol of a pearl and why not the diamond? The pearl, the pearl is the only jewel that is a product of a living creature. The pearl of a living matter, I'm sorry, of the living matter. A pearl is a response to of an oyster. The pearl is a response of an oyster to something which causes it injury. Which causes it injury. 
Now see, a pearl grows out of hurts. Just like a scab. A little particle of sand or something of irritation gets yes, ma'am. Oh, gets inside the shell of an oyster and it starts irritating it. It's just like a it's just like if some people eat in bed like crumbs in a bed and once you get that crumb and you be laying the bed is important. Or oh, this baby is so crummy. Or oh, this, this, this soul feels sandy or something going on, you know. But at the first ball, it's like, ooh, this is irritating. Or oh, it's like that mosquito buzzing around in your head. You just, every time you, you move your hand, you can't get it. But you see, an oyster, an oyster doesn't have any hands. See, an oyster doesn't have any hands. <coughs> so, it can't brush what's irritating it. So, it has no means of defense except that it's injury and irritating. And the more it's injured and the more it's irritating, it is transformed. It is transformed. It's no longer a source of irritation. That is what our Lord Jesus Christ came to do. And in order to accomplish it, he gave us all that he had. Go ahead. Question? No. Okay. I'm just amazed at what you said about the pearl. Well, the pearl, yeah, the pearl, that's, that's how it starts with the, the sand and something irritates it and it keeps going and it makes it a fine pearl. He paid it all. The crisis God answers answer to all the hurt of humanity. Loneliness, heartache, agony, suffering, shame. When Jesus came, Jesus knew no sin. Corinthians 5.21 tells us that he who knew no sin was made sin for us. Nevertheless, in the Garden of Gethsemane and on the cross, he entered into the world. He entered into what we feel, what we felt, the hurt, heartache, misery, emptiness, worthiness, rejection, despair. He felt the condemnation of the righteous God. He entered into all of that. He entered into all of that. He gave it all he had in order that he came to be with us, to feel what we felt, to feel, to be with us. In the midst of our hurt, he might be able to say, I know how you feel. And he is able to say, I know how you feel. I've been right there where you are. Because he's been here on earth and he knows and he cares. He knows exactly what we're going through. I understand. And I can put his he can put his loving hands upon us and begin to lead us out of the state. Though his were his son, he was a son of God, yet he learned. Disobedience through the things which he suffered and he cared. And he gave all that he had so that he might heal the hurt of humanity. A symbol of the pearl. A symbol of the pearl. Jesus is telling us. He knows, he's able to know, to touch us, to heal us, and to minister to us by beginning to clothe us with his own blood and taking up his own life and breath. Out of his moon side to wash away with his own blood the sins our wounds, our sins, our guilt, 
to cleanse us and to impart his life to us so that we might, we might be become more like him. Beautiful. Just like a pearl. Just like a pearl. Jesus himself is the treasure of the pearl. Knowing him, knowing him is the things that surpasses all else. Now, these parables teach us primarily how we must value the kingdom of heaven. Yet they also tells us about the people our Redeemer saved. He tells us, our Redeemer saves. As the man in the field, as the man in the field, some stumble upon Christ where they are not looking for him. Others travel various spiritual paths for years before they find Jesus just as the merchant, just as the merchant searches timeless for the, for the expensive pearl, God calls all. Those who stumble, those who are, and those who still search. God calls all of us. Now, parable three. Good and bad fish. Verse 47 50. When I read this, they said, verse 47 through 50, good and bad fish. Good and bad fish. And when they tell us about the good fish, about the good fish, a day when the good and bad fish, a day of judgment, it's coming when God will separate good from evil. Jesus tells his disciples that the kingdom of heaven is like a net that is thrown in the sea. Like a net that is thrown in the sea. And how fitting that Jesus gave this parable. That he gave this parable. The kingdom of heaven, like a fishing institute, because his disciples, he told them, I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. Now, when they used to, in the net, it was a large open mesh of rope that was woven and regular, intertwined. It would have both float and weight suitable for dragging the net between the boat and you're catching the fish, just like a string. The net is filled with fish, and it would be too heavy to put on the boat, so they would drag it along, drag it along, until they got to shore. Now, the net collected a variety of species of fish. Where the net is full, they hauled it ashore. Wherever a net typically collects more than fish, often it would also collect a variety of other species of sea life that was not useful or they had any purpose. And that reminds me, sometimes when we are um, in Africa, we are counting the two Milligan brothers, they be talking about you calling the fish, and then some of the one would say, well, yeah, I caught a few, but Man, I threw that back because that was too little. And one would say, I don't like that kind of fish. You know, you can't eat that kind of fish and you throw that back in. So, you know, I like when they talk about their fishing stories and they keep some and then they throw some back because some not worth eating. eating. My brother would say, not worth eating. They don't throw that. I don't like that kind. You know, you throw it back in there. They were saying, looking back at you clean all. <laughs> But sea life that was not useful. So they came ashore and they separated the, what is good and what was bad. And like the parable, Jesus tells his disciples, 
disciples, the angels, will separate the wicked from the righteous. The angels will do that. They will separate the wicked from the righteous. And the wicked will be thrown into the fiery furnace. And they will be wailing and teeth gashing. They will be in the fiery furnace. Then is God, you know, there is a little good and a bad in all of us. You can say that. There's a little good and bad in all of us. Are we one of the righteous? Yes. Are we one of the wicked? No. Are we one that are in between? Both wicked and righteous. 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 Say it again. Not straddling. Not straddling the fence. You can't straddle the fence.
is a person who made copies of the scriptures painstakingly by hand and thus was an expert in the law of Moses. But as a scribe is someone who understands the meaning and the messages of written words. That's what a scribe is. Written words, specifically the scriptures. Scribes possess a deep and wide understanding of the scripture, of their meaning and their message. A disciple is a learner, a disciple, listen very carefully now, a disciple is a learner, follower, or student. That's what a disciple is. A learner, follower, or student. Now what is a scribe? Right. And they understand. They understand. Now a disciple, what is a disciple? A learner or a follower. A learner or a follower. That's what a disciple is. How many of us are disciples? Hmm? Yes, yes. All of us. All of us. All of us. Now, a head of the household, a head of the household is the person who has the most authority in the house of the family. That's the head of the household. The head of the household. The householder bringing forth out of his treasure the things that are new and old indicate several things. First, the new and old. The new and old. The new treasures of Jesus and the old treasures of the law of Moses. Now, the old treasures of the law, they should be eagerly embraced. And the new treasures of the Messiah when he arrives on the scene. Now, the third the householder brings out treasures in a hiding place and displays the treasures for others to see. Like in a china closet or a china cabinet. You know you keep your, your fine china. Your people say your fine china. Your good silverware. Or you know heirlooms. You put it in a china closet or a cabinet. A cure. A cure. What's a cure? A cure. You know, you put it in the corner. You know, you got trinkets, treasures, trinkets and treasures. I heard a pastor say that um, when he had dinner one day, he went, he went to the dining room table. You know, that's when you know when somebody, every five people don't sit at the dining room table. But he said the dining room table. He told what he told, he asked his wife, he said, let's eat on the, he said, let's eat on the good china. You drink out the good glasses. Not the jelly glass, the jelly jar glass, but the good glass. Let's eat off the fine silverware. She said, well, it's company coming. He said, I am the company. He said, because I work, we work, and we just keep these, and we don't have company. Why well, save it? Just to look at it, we are company. Yes, yes. Let's, some time, let's eat on the fine china. Yes. You know? Eat, on the fi eat from the finest silverware, you know? Huh? Oh, see, courage and cussing. She looks at it and it, it. That's a, but that's your trap, you know. But if company come, you still gonna pull it up. No, no. It is eat where you eat on, right? Yes. See, people play. Well, that's it. That's it. Okay. You know, it's good enough for me. It's good enough for you. You know, the company coming. But he was using. Example that some people they never use it, you know. 
They keep it. They just keep it to look at. But you want to go as company come, you say, I'm the company, be the company, you know? Work hard every day. Let's use it sometime. Let's use it and enjoy it. But that's what the head of the household does. You know, he displays his treasure. His treasures, this treasure belongs to the head of the house. And the kingdom of heaven is Jesus' kingdom and the opportunity we have and we must understand it and offer the faithfulness and the acceptance. Jesus says, Jesus says that every scribe who becomes a disciple who diligently seeks the kingdom of heaven is like a head of household. One who has the authority over treasures. A scribe's treasure is his knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. Out of his wealth, of scriptural knowledge, this kingdom see scribes, which brings forth the treasures that are both new things and old things. In other words, his understandings will be beautifully affirmed in a timeless way. Timeless truths that he and others have longed to understand. And his kingdom oriented or originated insight will uncover new understandings of the scriptures that have always been present but could only be seen in the light of the kingdom. In the scribe who seeks the kingdom of heaven, who has eyes, who has eyes to see and ears to hear, discerning eyes and discerning ears to hear. What the scriptures have are more fully revealed and say. Yes ma'am. The old and new um, and I look at it like this and I'm not saying I'm right. The Old Testament like some people say we are living you know we don't really have to follow the laws of the Old Testament because that's old. And the New Testament, we follow that because that's where Jesus came in. But to me, you can't really fully understand the new until you know the old. Because there's so much in the old that is prophesied, and when it's prophesied, you go to the new and already came through. So you need both, the old and the new, just like in, in our lesson this morning. Yeah. The, old, the Old Testament is new treasure, old treasure. Old treasure. And the New Testament is new treasure, but we need them both. We need them both. To fully understand, we need them both. The old and the new. We need them both to fully understand. <laughs> to fully understand. We must have discerning ears and discerning eyes. And when it says discerning ears and discerning eyes, it tells us that we are to listen and to understand. And discerning eyes, remember, discerning eyes, is to see, to understand, perceive, or recognize. Discerning ears to hear. When we hear the word and know the word and understand it. The discernment in the Bible to understand what is good and what is evil. Now, we ask that our Father grant us the wisdom to recognize the priceless nature of your kingdom. We give us the courage to yield all that we have for it. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray and that we recognize the priceless nature of the kingdom. And when Jesus is, and in the last when Jesus said the old and the new, the old and the new, and he was asking, and when he asked in verse 56, 51, it says, Jesus said unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. 
yea, Lord. Then he said unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed into the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is the householder, and bring forth out all of his treasures, old and new. When you go home today, think about some of your treasures. I'm going to keep mine close to me. Have a blessed day and a blessed can week. I, Thank you can all. Can I ask you something else too? Um, well, I'll, in our conclusion, it says, I read this over and over and over, and I was sort of puzzled, but the more you read it, the more you get the understanding of it. It says, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. Would anybody like to comment on that? And, and the conclusion. He is no fool who gave what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. What does that mean to, to you? I mean, what is it saying to, you, to us? He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. You know, the Bible teaches us what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, it's cliche when we hear this whole, oh, we never see a U-Haul follow the hearse. You can't take it with you. So the things that we have that we lose and we enjoy in this life, it's not the thing that we will ultimately keep forever into eternity. And so when Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven, He's talking about eternal life. He's talking about everlasting life. That's the thing that you cannot lose. The soul salvation that you are gaining while you're in the land of the living. Even though, as you know, he's talking about all these treasures, we can um, identify and associate with the material things, the land, the pearl, and etc. But at the end of the day, those are all material and temporary things. Thing that is of most value is the soul that we are developing while we're here in the land of the living so that we can have everlasting life, so we can have eternal joy and victory. I believe that that's the thing, you know, it's, you're not a fool if you give up what you can't keep because we know that these things are temporary, but the thing that will last forever is your eternal soul, your eternal life, your everlasting life. That's why he uses words like eternal and mm -hmm. everlasting versus the things that are just temporary. I mean, you, you, we see every day people lose all of their material possessions in hurricanes and tornadoes and fire due to death and all of this other stuff. And, and what did they have? From? Some of them had stuff in safes and in vaults had alarm systems on their houses and all that, and that still didn't stop them from losing everything they had. That they may have treasured and value to the highest. Exactly. No. So we must remember to remain dedicated to the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is a treasure far beyond any material possessions. But it costs, is a willingness, but it costs is a willingness to give up what we have to follow Jesus. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Someone give us a song, please.
first um, the thing that I read out of the um, conclusion. So that says that we all are no fools, right? Amen. All right. <laughs> I read that over and over and over, and I said, I, no, I think I got it. And it's just like how you said, it says, the worldly things we will not keep, but eternal life will have to have. Um, thank you so much, Lisa, for a job. Well done. Well done. And I like your treasures. I like your treasures. <laughs> um, and I was amazed about the, the fur. I, I didn't really, I didn't know that. Um, remember our sick and shut in and pray for those. Pray for them. Call them, visit if you can. Um, do we have any visitors? On last Sunday, we asked the Sunday school to pray for our member Mary. But God's will has been done. And her funeral will be tomorrow at 11 right here. And I ask that you pray for the family and pray for us because our heart hurts just like, like the, the family is hurting. So pray that God will give us strength and we will do, do what he tells us to do. But keep the family in prayer. Is there anyone that I might miss? Um, my cousin lost his wife, Thomas Addison. He lost his wife. I don't know when the funeral is going to be, but um, pray for that family. Um, is there anyone that you would like to call that I have missed? In the hospital, sick or bereavement? Who? He's still in hospital? They call it is a roper now. Okay, please pray for that family also. Anybody else? You have uh, Cynthia Middleton expired. You asked us to come with the military that expired. Open that expired. Cynthia Middleton. Who's that? Cynthia Middleton. Caution and Alvaro. Caution. Cynthia Middleton and Emma Jane Milligan, both I have tried it. Please keep them in your prayers and do what you can to console them at this time because the day belongs to them but, and tomorrow can be ours. We don't know what what we'll face when we walk out of this, this door. So if you can, please be some kind of comfort to these people. A call, but if you can't call, if you can't visit, what do we do? We keep them in prayer because God can go, prayer can go where we can't go. Um, we won't have a secretary report, but um, you'll get your books, new books next month, um, August. I don't know when, what's Sunday, but you'll get your new books next month. And what I want you to do, everybody that gets the book, sign their name. Well, you did that last year, sign your name on the people so I know who got books and, you know. Okay, um, we won't have a secretary report. Is there no, announce no more announcement from the floor? We'll stand for our closing. Tie us together. Tie us together. Tie us with hope that can be Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.